Greetings, welcome to Kieran's Musica Codex. This video is part of a class I routinely teach as part of the Society for Creative Anachronism, or SCA. The SCA is a medieval reenactment educational organization. More information can be found at www.sca.org. Class handouts and more can be found at my website, www.musicacodex.com. Check it out. Welcome to the history of the guitar. In the Society for Creative Anachronism, I'm known as Kieran McBrendan. I want to give credit to Master Johann von Solothurn, who did a lot of the research on which this class is based. My goal in this class is to take you through the history of the guitar, from its early origins in the 1500s to modern day, and answer some fundamental questions. One question you should have is, is the guitar an actual medieval instrument? The answer to that question is clearly yes. If you look at the image on this page, you will see Orpheus in El Maestro by Louis Milan in 1536. This image shows Orpheus playing something that looks incredibly like a guitar. The image has an instrument that has a long neck, a straight peg head, a flat back, a classic figure eight shape. He's playing what's called a vihuela. So to start off with a basic statement, the guitar is a period instrument. The guitar did not look like a current modern guitar, but it did evolve to its current form. The period guitar is similar to the modern guitar, both in tuning and in shape, but has significant differences, such as the number of strings and the physical size of the instrument. I want to be very clear in that the modern steel string and nylon string classical guitar are not period guitars. However, the guitar itself is a period instrument. Let's look at some examples of quotes from the period. These show clearly that the guitar does exist. Capriol from Arbeau in 1589 refers to playing lutes and guitars. If you look at the image at the top right, you will see the actual text from the original source circled. Sebastian Orozco in 1611 said, since the invention of the guitar, there have been very few who have devoted themselves to the study of the vihuela. It is a great loss because all kinds of notated music was played on it, and now the guitar is nothing more than a cowbell, so easy to play, especially in Resgado, that there is not a stable boy who is not a musician of the guitar. Also, in 1650, Constantine Huygens said, Gautier has told me that having played for two hours on his most excellent lute in the king's cabinet at Madrid, the grandees of Spain said it was a great pity that he did not play the guitar, which tempted him to break his lute over their heads. So, as you can see, the guitar certainly did exist during this time period. Let's start at the beginning and look at an instrument that is frequently associated with the guitar, at least in popular culture, and that would be the lute. The lute is a stringed instrument characterized by having a fairly short neck, a high angled peg head, a teardrop shaped body, and an arched back consisting of multiple ribs. The strings on the lute were typically tied in pairs which were known as courses. The peg head on the lute would frequently reach almost 90 degrees in angle. Multiple coarse lutes were common and the later in the medieval period we go, the more courses tend to show up on the instrument. There's a huge library of music written for the lute. However, most of it is written in a notation known as tablature. Now, there is much debate over whether the lute is actually an ancestor of the guitar. I fall into the camp that believes that the lute is not a direct ancestor of the guitar. There is enough structural difference between the lute and the guitar to show that there would have had to have been some evolutionary instrument in line between the lute and the guitar. As you will see, it makes much more sense that the guitar descended from a somewhat different path. That said, this slide does show a beautiful lute from 1596. So, if the guitar did not descend from the lute, where did it come from? The most likely source is from an instrument called the vihuela, also known in Italy as the viola de mano. The vihuela originated in Spain somewhere in the 15th century, and it filled the role in Spain that the lute did in Italy. 
The instrument is very similar to the guitar in many ways. It has a flat back, it has a figure eight narrow waist shape, it's fretted, it has six courses of strings, and the peg head is only at a slight angle, rather than the near 90 degree angle that we see in the lute. There are only three surviving vihuelas from this time period. The photo on this page shows the Guadalupe vihuela. Let's take a step past the vihuela and look at the origins of the guitar. The four course guitar was well known by the middle of the 16th century. We know for a fact that it existed in that time frame. It was popular enough in 1546 for Alonso Madera to include compositions for it in his vihuela book. Also, interestingly, Mudera referred to both a new tuning and an old tuning. Now remember, this is 1546. This begs the question, how old does it have to be in order for a tuning to be referred to as old? 20 years? 40 years? It's conjecture, but if we assume that the old tuning required some period of time to become old, then the guitar could have originated around 1500. The guitar is also mentioned by Juan Bermundo in 1555 and discussed in a comment in the prologue of Fuenianas or Finica Lera in 1554. There's a quote in the prologue that says, Fantasias for Vihuela of four courses, which is called guitar. It's also worthy of note that the four course guitar has the highest four strings tuned to the same tuning as the modern guitar. There's a large repertoire of music from this time period by Leroy and Morlay and others. On this slide, you can see the red highlighted area encircles the text that I mentioned earlier about Fantasias for Vihuela of Four Courses, which is called Guitar. This shows the original source material from 1554 with a reference in Spanish. So let's move on to the next guitar in sequence, which would be the five course guitar. The five-course guitar rose shortly after the four-course guitar, and it is referred to by Juan Bermundo in 1555. Interestingly, Fuenlana's five-course vihuela music is for an instrument that is tuned exactly like a five-course guitar. Fuenlana may have been referring to the five-course guitar when he said vihuela, but there is no proof of this. It's simply conjecture. There are other sources of music for this guitar published in 1595 and 1596, and there is something referred to as alphabeto notation from as early as 1580. Later on in this class, we'll have a look at what alphabeto is. The image in this slide is a beautiful five-course guitar from 1581. Continuing with the evolution of the five-course guitar, we move to the Baroque guitar. It's a direct evolution from the five-course guitar we just saw in the 16th century. Its evolution continues through the mid-18th century. It's larger than the five-course Renaissance guitar, though smaller than today's guitars. An interesting detail is that the guitar frequently used what was referred to as re-entrance tunings. This type of tuning is different from what we're used to in modern guitars. The common tuning you would have used today and the tuning you would have used in the 16th century has the highest pitch string on one side of the instrument and the lowest pitch string on the other, with all of the strings changing in pitch in sequence. That is to say, each string would progress to be higher or lower than the previous one, depending on the direction in which you were going. Re-entrant tunings, however, have strings that are out of sequence. For example, you'll start with the lowest string, and the next string would be higher, and the next string would be higher, then the next string would be lower, and the next one would be higher. It's very unusual in modern tunings to see this type of tuning on a guitar. The guitar shown on the slide is a Baroque guitar from roughly 1640. Another great example is the image from The Guitar Player by Jan Vermeer. If we look at the image from The Guitar Player, you see that the lady is playing an instrument that has a flat back, is a figure eight shape with a narrow waist, has a slender neck, has a pegboard that is barely angled, and has five courses of strings. This is very clearly a Renaissance or Baroque guitar. Okay, so we've reached the end of what one would consider to be the medieval and Renaissance guitar period. At this point, the guitar continues to evolve until the mid-1700s. In the mid-1700s, we see the beginning of six course and six string guitars. Six course guitars we know existed in the 1750s. There were six string guitars in existence by the late 1770s. The earliest known six string guitar was built in 1779 in Naples, Italy. I specifically want to call out Antonio Torres Guarado from Seville, Spain in 1840. His designs and works became the blueprint for modern guitars. Let's look at the image on this slide. 
This is clearly a six string, not six course guitar. It has metal frets, not tied frets, and all the other characteristics that clearly make it a guitar. A rather slender neck and a, ped, a peg head that is tilted from the neck, a figure eight shape, narrow waist, and a flat back. The next step in the evolution of the modern guitar occurs roughly in 1840. C.F. Martin develops what is known as X-bracing during this period for use on gut-stringed guitars. X-bracing was developed to increase the structural integrity of the instrument. This structural integrity would be key in that within 50 years we would see steel strings on the guitar. There is no way that a guitar without this type of bracing would have been able to sustain the tension required for steel strings. So let's recap. We have Orpheus with the Vihuela in 1536. We talk about the lute, which is not the guitar. We have multiple references to the guitar from the mid-1500s. We know that the Vihuela existed in Spain from the early to mid-1500s. The characteristics of the Vihuela were its figure eight body, flat back, long neck, and mostly straight peg head. The four course guitar arose prior to the mid 16th century, perhaps as early as 1500, due to the fact that there are references to an old tuning as of 1546. The four course guitar is tuned to the top four strings of the modern guitar, even though the instrument is much smaller. We have references to the five course guitar as early as 1555. In fact, Fuenyana's five course vihuela may have actually referred to a five course guitar. At least it's written for an instrument tuned exactly like a five course guitar. Then comes the evolution of the Baroque guitar, still five strings and a little larger than the Renaissance guitar, yet still smaller than today's guitar. Six course guitars existed in 1750, six string guitars existed in the 1770s. By the mid 1800s, C.F. Martin develops X bracing for gut strings, which allows the use of steel strings as early as 1900. That is essentially the family tree of the guitar from the Vihuela to the modern day. I hope that you can see that there is clearly a medieval instrument called the guitar that is the ancestor of today's guitar. Now, let's take a few minutes and talk about the notation and the music for the guitar. I mentioned earlier that there was a large body of work for the lute. It's written in a form of notation known as tablature. Let me take a moment and explain tablature. It's a notation system that represents a specific musical instrument. You can think of it as almost a mechanical system of notation. There's no need to actually be able to read music. Tablature will show you which strings are on the instrument and which frets to press at any given point on a certain string. The rhythm with which to play is shown above the staff. There are both Italian and French styles of lute notation. Guitar notation in this period was typically written using lute tablature. So let's take a look at both types of tablature. We'll start off with Italian. In Italian lute tablature, the lines denote the strings, with the top line of the tablature referring to the lowest pitch string on the instrument. Frets are indicated using numbers on the lines. Zero refers to an open string, one refers to the first fret, two refers to the second fret, and so on. The rhythm with which to play is indicated above the tablature. There were some very limited cases where the order of strings in Italian tablature was reversed, but these are very, very rare. The image you see here is from a piece written in 1592. Now, French tablature is similar, but with a couple of significant differences. The lines still represent the strings. However, the top line on the page refers to the highest pitch string on the instrument. Fret positions are indicated with letters rather than numbers and they're written in the spaces above the lines rather than being written on the line itself. For example, A indicates an open string, B would be the first fret, C would be the second fret, etc. As in lute tablature, the rhythm is indicated above the line. The piece we're looking at here is actually written for the four course guitar in 1553. The third style of notation that I want to bring up is what is called alphabeto. You will occasionally hear that instruments of this period were only plucked, or that individual notes were played. We know this to be false for a couple of reasons. First, if you think back to Orozco's quote at the beginning, now the guitar is nothing more than a cowbell, so easy to play, especially in Rasgado, that there is not a stable boy who is not a musician of the guitar. 
When he refers to rasgado, he's actually referring to strumming the guitar. Alphabeto notation was a way to denote chords to be strummed. This notation emerged at the end of the 16th century and was basically a catalog of chord positions on the guitar. Each chord shape was given a letter, A, B, C, D, E, etc., etc. If you look at this example, you will see that there are chords called M, Q, and X, and other notes that don't exist in the modern staff. That's because the names of these chords had nothing to do with the actual notes playing the chord. We could have referred to them as 1, 2, 3, 4. So don't mistake and think that in alphabeto, an A has anything to do with the actual notes of an A chord. The image you see here is from 1606. And on the next slide, it shows the Bazon manuscript, which matches the alphabeto shown previously in the 1606 guitar book. So we've reached the end of the course. I hope at this point that you understand there was an instrument called the guitar, it did exist in the medieval period, that it evolves over the course of several hundred years to directly become the modern guitar. I hope you found this course interesting, and thank you very much for listening.